welcome to this series of uh, what is the gospel and we're gonna look into that into six different parts and so this is the first part so welcome to you now today we're gonna look at uh, some parts and some components that I think it's important to get when we are speaking about what is the gospel and it's important for us to understand that the God he is actually pronouncing the end from the beginning God is outside of time and uh, God has a different view uh, than what we might have and so God he did something really wonderful when it comes to sharing with the Apostle John something that will take place short after the vision that God gave him. I think that John must have been really excited about that. I mean, he was on an island called Patmos because he was persecuted and put out there uh, at this island in isolation. And on this island, it is uh, as if God is just taking the curtain of time back like this. And he's just showing John what would take place shortly hereafter. Let us read from Revelation 7 and verse 9 and 10. It says here in the revelation that John had. After these things I looked and behold a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, and who sits on the throne and the Lamb. What an encouragement that must have been for John. I mean, imagine all the hardness and all the persecution and all the things happening at the very point where God gave him this revelation. And when he pulls back the curtain, it is as if God is saying to John, he's saying, John, in the end, the gospel will have gone forth. The command that came through my son Jesus to take the gospel to the ends of the earth, that command and that assignment will be fulfilled. You know, John, he was with Jesus when Jesus was giving this as known as the great commandment to him, to the disciples, to all disciples of Christ throughout all ages even now today if you are watching this and you are a follower of Jesus Christ you are per definition a, a disciple and this is what he said to them in Mark 16 verse 15 and 16 he says go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will become condemned the command is clear the mission and the call to every believer is very clear. But what is the message exactly that we are to bring out into all the world? And how can we align our lives to be workers in His harvest field in seeing the kingdom of God going forth, seeing the gospel reaching out to tongues, tribes and nations? That's what we're going to look more into after this short little break. 95% of all believers across the globe do not share the gospel on a regular basis. What is the number one blockage? Fear. What comes next? Well, they simply don't feel qualified to and they don't know how to. We believe and exist to challenge that. To really challenge that status quo that is keeping the bride of Christ up in bondage and fear. We want to empower you and to give you resourceful training and create opportunities for you to step up and to share the gospel in your sphere of influence. Maybe with a neighbor, maybe with a family member. We really want to resource you even to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Over the last years we have hardness teaching that we want to empower and equip you to stand strong where God has placed you. This we will launch in 2021 and we really want to hand this over to you that you may see a change in your life and in your sphere of influence. God bless you. Well, welcome back. Uh, today we are looking at what 
is the gospel? And uh, the first of this six part series, uh, we're going to look at what the gospel is. And the first point is that the gospel actually is God's plan of salvation before the foundation of the world. Yes, you heard me right. It's God's plan of salvation before the foundation of the world. It is not so that when man sinned, that God had a nervous breakdown thinking, what in the world shall I do now? Now that people have made high treason and, and turned their backs on me and, and fallen into rebellion and sin. It's not like God didn't have something in mind. Let us use our imagination together just for a moment. And uh, let us imagine that we are up in heaven right now. And we are watching God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit talking together about creating the universe, creating worlds, creating the planet, creating all the things that they were to create. And then the Holy Spirit says, hey, and let us make something really unique, something really special. Let us make a being that is just like us, created in our image. Jesus getting excited, thinking, yeah, let's do that. Let us start to do that. Starting to map out, starting to plan, starting to think, starting to visualize together how that could look like. Suddenly the Holy Spirit says, but hey, if we create them in our own image, giving them a free will, just as we have, what if they use this will to rebel and to make high treason against us? And what will then be? The father saying, wow, if that happens, then I will have to keep them responsible for what they have done. And I will actually have to separate them out of my kingdom because my kingdom consists of love and it consists of righteousness. And, and so I cannot, I cannot allow that to happen and I have to keep them accountable. And Jesus says, well, if that ever happens, then I will choose to become a human being. That I will come on earth, I will live the life that they could not live, I will die the death of separation from God that they deserve and I will raise again from the dead and I will pave the way for each and every one to come back to the Father, to come back to the union and re relationship that we once had, if that would ever happen. The Father looked at the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit looked at the Father, they all agreed and from that day on Jesus was counted as slaughtered before the foundations of the world. The Bible is actually full of that scripture. I know that we just used the imagination now for a moment but actually the scripture is actually correlating to this very fact. Let us read in 1 Peter together chapter 1 and we're going to read from verse 17 to 21. Here at Peter he explains something and he says and if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourself throughout the time you stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Now listen to this. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. We have to remember this very fact that God is never taken by a surprise. And as I said, the Bible is full of scriptures like these. I will just read a couple of more to you. Revelation 13 and verse 8 says, in a by sentence, it's kind of a little bit out of the context what I'm reading right here, but I just wanted to highlight this sentence in the end of this verse in, in Revelation 13 verse 8. It says, all who dwell on earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You see, the Lamb was considered slain before the foundation of the world. Of the world. Why? Because God made an escape route if man would choose to use their free will to turn their backs upon him. Ephesians 1 
and verse 3 to 6 we also read, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Listen to this. Just as He chose us in Him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestined us to adoption as Son by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. He chose us in Him before the foundations of the world, meaning that if man would fall into sin, God already had foreordained Jesus to take our place and that those who accept and receive their work that Christ have accomplished on the cross will be considered in Christ and receive their acceptance again as sons and daughters of God. I think this is beautiful and from, from Genesis to Revelation we can really see these traits in types, shadows, allegories by prophetic words, even prophetically lived lives we can actually see that these are pointing to Jesus, his own son, Jesus Christ, who is God's plan of salvation before the foundation of the world. That was part one. The next part we will look at another very important thing that the gospel is. So stay tuned. God bless you.